This is the MSC chain with high AKST. Okay, so we have the positive policy intervention. There are still some reds there, but predominantly there are benefits to this policy which arise overall. So if we're looking back at the MSA change for biodiversity, this also has benefits. But remember, we're not valuing the MSA change here. It's worth painting a more bleak picture as well. PBL also model an alternative, which is basically a curtailment in agricultural productivity increase. So currently, they're assuming at the baseline, between 2020 and 2050, there'll be a 60% increase in productivity, just as business as usual. But many argue that actually that's an overestimate. And so they actually saw an example of basically what would happen if we didn't have this, this baseline, and you see lots of brown there, okay, significant changes in terms of no AKST, okay, that's the MSA changes arising as well. What are the overall results by region? Well, basically, the benefit results here, this shows us, this is taken from paper and we'll talk about in a minute, but the 2150 undiscounted annual benefits, and also at 3% to 5% of net present value. What we're talking about is billions of US dollars of net present value, okay? Because we've got this policy intervention. That's a strong signal unto itself. But what's interesting about this analysis is that there's a very significant document called Agriculture at the Crossroads, which developed an estimate for the cost of this kind of intervention, okay? And we've used this, it's not quite like for like, but I think it's fairly similar in terms of the scenario they're looking at. And we use this and we therefore generate these benefit cost ratios. So the, in summary here, we have a situation that even if we don't include carbon benefits, okay, then for every dollar spent on high-level invest, high investment agricultural knowledge, science, technology in the developing world, you get a benefit of about four dollars in benefit. If you include the carbon benefits using the Poles model, for every dollar invested, you get twenty dollars in return. Okay, using the, the the rice median model, it's about seven and a half. So even if we're looking at this in pure neoclassical cost-benefit terms, using a discount rate and applying it, there are significant net benefits to this kind of intervention. So final slide, conclusion looking forward. Basically, we have we looked at different options and agricultural knowledge science technology, reduced deforestation, which is a variant of red, extension of protected areas, 20% of ecoregions. These all as options provide significant net benefits in land cover change impacts. Okay? And this is one of the reasons that the quantitative assessment was pushed forward, um, and there's been a lot of controversy over it, is because this is the kind of message we need to take forward at an international level, an international policy agenda. Because if we do have benefit cost ratios of 16 or more, then that's a very strong message. And it's a message particularly pertinent in an environment where people are cash strapped, which is good value for money. Okay? So you, you happen to create biodiversity benefits, those are additional, but just in terms of land cover change and the value thereof and the carbon benefits, these benefits are extremely large. What are the next steps? Well, we looked at this just at 2020-50. We have the data at intermediate points. So we're going to try and do the analysis. So instead of having a single straight line trajectory from 2020-50, we tried to develop intermediate points. We're also interested in comparing this MSA change profile with the value changes. Does the MSA change occur in the same place geographically? And the value changes occurs. Think about isolated values by type for ecosystem service. But that's more tricky because our data set isn't large enough and we probably will be, have a, will be statistically robust in that case. And then the talics there, the T3. Okay? Because clearly what we can do here is to <coughs> instigate this kind of analysis at national level. Because we obviously have the kind of GIS coordinates of different countries and different regions. And we can look at the value changes that occur, at least as business as usual and also look at the leakage effects that apply as well. Finally, there's been a lot of controversy about this. The reason why this isn't generally available is because the team advisory board are still deciding what to do with this, okay, and in honesty. But we have, we are going to present this, and Yomar and I are going to present this at the Copenhagen Consensus. Some of you might know about this. This is um, Mr. Lombard's um, uh, vehicle to consider climate change. Um, so it will be reviewed by four Nobel laureates in economics, which is slightly intimidating experience for me. Um, and so you present that, and their agenda is if you have $75 billion to throw at a problem, which problem would you throw it at? Okay? Now I think we've got a fairly convincing argument for throwing this at biodiversity ecosystem services. And uh, I hope you agree. Okay.